Hello and welcome to TVC News at 7. We begin in Imo State where Governor Hope Uzodima has condemned the early morning attack on the home of the President of Ohaneze Indigbu, George Obiozo. Governor Uzodima announced that the government is working with security agencies to identify and punish the perpetrators. He also assured the citizens that the government will continue to do all it can to protect lives and property in the state. Although the police public relations officer, Mike Abatam, confirmed the incident, he said that the hoodlums came in vehicles, threw petrol bombs in the house, damaging properties. The police PRO also said that the police no life was lost and no one injured as the professor Obiozo was not in the house when the incident happened. And also in the early hours of today, gunmen attacked and set ablaze the Divisional Police Headquarters of Umuguma Oweri West in Imo State. And according to reports, the hoodlums came with guns and explosive ordnance disposals and opened fire after blocking the roads leading in and out of the station. The gunmen were reported to have invaded the police station in the early hours of today and attacked police officers on duty. The attack comes hours after the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of the zone, Umwahe, Isaac Akimoyede, visited the state command. Well, away from that now to River State, where the Nigerian Navy has arrested five suspects for their alleged involvement in crude oil theft along the waterways. The arrests and seizures made are some of the latest from the Navy's offensive against artisanal refineries code named Operation River Dominance. And our senior correspondent, Uche Okuru, reports. The Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder activated Operation River Dominance in January 2022. Since then, the base says it has deterred a significant number of persons involved in illegal oil bunkering through denial of access or arrest and prosecution. These suspects were taken into custody by Navy patrol teams on the Kilometer 45 River while transporting diesel that was allegedly stolen. Their tugboat, a barge and a tanker truck were also seized. Synergy between the Navy and other stakeholders in maritime security, such as the local communities, has been the key to the success of Operation River Dominance so far. We have recorded a lot of successes as we have discussed, and these successes are indicative of the professionalism, dedication and determination of the commander and his pathfinder in his bid to ensure that economic saboteurs are brought to book within the area of operations of the base. And interestingly, as I also stated earlier, we have uh, enjoyed a lot of collaboration with various security agencies and governments at uh, all levels. This joint tree, which is very sufficient, has been a great uh, mission enabler. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation last year revealed that around 200,000 barrels of crude is lost daily through vandalism and theft. This has cost the country at least $29 billion in the last six years. And so the reality is that the illegal oil bunkering and refining industry remains a serious challenge for security agencies like the Nigerian Navy. The economic saboteurs are very, very resilient. And as you have testified, uh, immediately after um, an operation is conducted and the sites are destroyed, these guys come back in no time. Uh, what we do on our own part is to remain focused, determined and resolute in ensuring that we continue to maintain aggressive presence and we continue our operations. The suspects and exhibits were handed over to the prosecuting agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, for further action. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Harcourt. Well, let's turn to Abuja, where the National Agricultural Seeds Council has warned dealers of fake and adulterated seeds to desist from such practice or be prepared to face the full wrath of the law. This comes just as a raid. It raided some shops within the FCT to rid them of low-quality seeds. And our correspondent, Lara, Lara of Falayan, reports. 
Normal business activities were ongoing in this shop within the FCT before enforcement officers from the National Agricultural Seeds Council swooped on its owners for what they term dealing in uncertified seeds. We go out like that unnoticed so that we just check on them and those ones that are doing it well we uh, give them a collision. Those that are uh, performing below standard we checkmate and sanction them. The enforcement exercise was also carried out in other areas visited by the team, but the dealers here already got adequate approval from the regulatory authorities. This is not the first time these types of raids will be carried out, but the offenders have continued to engage in these sales termed illegal by the seed regulating authorities. The seed industry regulators say they will not relent in weeding the country's markets and shops of such items and want those engaged in the trade. We are of the opinion that with continuous pressure and uh, activities, definitely we are going to achieve 100% compliance. At the moment we achieve 100% compliance, we are sure that uh, seeds that will get to the end of Nigeria farmer will be of top quality and farmer will have value for their money. This victim laments the situation and pledges to get appropriate approval as the enforcement officers tell him failure to do so before their next raid would result in his seeds being totally confiscated. They have started making payment on that. The receipt of the payment of the process is what is with one of my colleagues, Ismaila. He is the one in charge of registration in Latvia. So the, the registration is on process. The failure of locally cultivated seeds to meet local demand is one major reason why fake and adulterated seeds have flooded Nigerian markets to fill the supply gap. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. Chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, has stressed the need for post-traumatic therapy for Nigerians evacuated from the crisis in Ukraine. While receiving the American Society of Safety Professionals in Abuja, Ms. Dabiri Erewa asked the professional body to remain agents of change in uplifting Nigeria's global image. In, on his part, the President, American Society of Safety Professionals, Nigerian chapter, Shehu Kabir, said the organization is willing to volunteer in reintegrating Nigerian returnees. Groups and associations all over the world. So all you just need to do, after all this is done, we can link you up with them and then they get to know more about your association. And like you said, safety is for everybody. Everybody needs it. You know, it, it's part of our daily life. So I think it's something everybody should be involved in. So wherever you are, whether it's in Dubai or Saudi or Liberia, during COVID-19, we actually got a group of the diaspora together and they gave equipment worth almost over 50 million naira. You know, PPEs to every state of Nigeria. So that's what we try to do, partnership, volunteerism, you know, giving back to your country and your society. A lot of Nigerians that are in diaspora are willing to communicate with us and also interact and network. So that one gives us a very, very impressive idea that if we really had a good uh, relationship with the uh, NITCOM, it will really go a long way to make our ASSP uh, excel in diaspora, whereby all our people, Nigerians, can be able to network with us and so that they link up so that we will make something better for our country. And so since the Nigerian chapter was doing so much, we felt that we needed a platform that would quickly pull them together. And we appreciate all you do for the diaspora, your fairness, your justice, your advocacy, standing in for Nigerians have been great all over the years. And we felt that there will be no other um, uh, establishment that we could partner with to reach out to our very own, if not with you, Ma. And we know that if we have the synergy together, we'll be able to reach out to a lot of Nigerians wherever they are. And ASSP Nigerian chapter, SSP globally cuts across every discipline. So irrespective of what you do, safety is sure and safety is key. 
The war between Russia and Ukraine has entered its third week with peace seeming far from sight. More deaths are being recorded and humanitarian crisis is deepening. In the meantime, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is calling for urgent negotiations with Russia. Reports say fighting is still continuing within the busy southern port city of Mariupol, where Russian troops have been able to walk their way in through armored columns. About 300,000 people are still trapped there. They are caught under the shelling because evacuation routes still cannot be used. About 100 people are trapped in the bomb theater that was earlier said to be housing more than 1,000 people after it was targeted a couple of days ago. Analysts say if Mariupol falls amid the current tough situation, that would provide Russia with an effective land corridor stretching for most of the south coast and up the eastern regions of Ukraine. As Mariupol bears the brunt, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling on Russia to come to the negotiating table without delay. He's urging Russia to count its own losses, saying it is time to restore territorial integrity and justice for Ukraine. President Zelensky also says Russian shelling is preventing the establishment of humanitarian corridors from the besieged city of Mariupol. The mayor of the city says fighting has now reached the city center. On his part, Russia's president Vladimir Putin has accused Ukraine of stalling peace talks with unrealistic proposals. He allegedly said that in a telephone conversation with a German chancellor. He held the invasion of Ukraine to thousands in a Russian stadium. Elsewhere, the eastern city of Kharkiv is continuing to repel Russian attacks. The same is happening in Sumy to the northeast. Fierce fighting is continuing in several cities in more than three weeks after Russia launched its full-scale invasion. According to Maxa Technologies' analysis and satellite images, the Russian military is literally digging in, constructing etting berms around its military equipment northwest of the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. The new satellite images show the protective berms around Russian military equipment near Ozera and the Antonov Air Base. Additional Russian military and some BEM construction are also seen in the villages of Zivithivka and Beresyanka, further northwest. The Nigerian Air Force War College has inaugurated an Air Force War course at its college in Makro di Benue City Capital. The course seeks to equip participants with operational and warfare management as part of solutions to address the country's security challenges. Maiwa Okwato reports. This Air Force War course was first inaugurated in November 2016. It is to sharpen participants' understanding of air power and its employment in independent, joint and combined operations. The course, which is for wing commanders, has a curriculum which features written and oral exercises, study visits, war gaming and seminars. Participants are advised to be receptive to alternative opinions and perspectives. The course curriculum comprises nine modules arranged into three academic terms. The first module, Foundation Studies, is covered in the first term. Term two encompasses four modules, namely Military History and Strategy, national security, defense architecture, and interagency collaboration. The chief of staff, Air Tactical Command, is here representing the Air Officer Commanding the Command. He believes the course will go a long way in equipping participants in operational planning, warfare, and management, as it will help manage the security challenges facing the country. The models of this course are geared towards uh, improving your efficiency in operations, 
operational planning, operational management, and the art of command and hospital warfare. So this course uh, is very important for the Nigerian Air Force, for the officers who are going through the program. At, at the end of this program, they will have been reoriented and trained better operational managers, and uh, with the challenges we are facing as a country, be better, better ready, they'll be more ready to face these challenges and deal with them accordingly. This is also expected to be the contribution of the Air Force War College to ensuring an innovative and resilient leadership for the military that is essential to repositioning the combined warfare. Mayowa Okwato, TVC News, Makodi. And finally, TVC News flagship program, Journalist Hangout, has bagged another award for most impacting television program in Nigeria and best program of the year for its role in setting the pace for investigative journalism. The award was organized by Gazelle News. An online news platform was to honor outstanding Nigerians from all walks of life, including TVC News Babajide Kolade or Titoju, who received the award for Journalist of the Year. And TVC News Nelson Etta reports. Mr. Jide Utitoloju. It was another shining moment of pride for TVC News for its quality journalism. At the annual lecture and award night of the Gazelle News, an online news platform in Lagos, Journalist Hangout, which has become one of the most watched current affairs program on television for truth and accuracy, backed the Good Governance Award for Most Impactful Television Program in Nigeria and Best Program of the Year. Professor Odogu Otito Ju. I present this to you, congratulations. The group controller of current and public affairs at TVC News, Babajide Kolade Otitoji, also backed the award for best journalist of the year. I feel indebted for the honor done journalists and out and myself today. Our goal is to see a better Nigeria a Nigeria that we all can be proud of. A Nigeria that we can hand over to our children and our children's children. That can be a bad Nigeria to aspire for. And that's why we do what we do. The publisher of the Gazelle News, Musbao Razak, speaks more on this year's award and the theme for the lecture, Good Governance. We believe that some people have done well, some organizations, some individuals, some organizations, and the only thing you can do to let them do more is to appreciate their effort. Other award recipients included the national leader of the APC, the governor of Borono State, the minister of works, that of interior, and the commander of rapid response court RRS for the best journalist of the year. Babajide Kolade Otitoju, this award is not just a recognition of good journalism, but a push to consistently tell the truth. We will still have more stories for you. Kellogg's has unveiled a new product to the Nigerian market. The new Go Grain cereal is full of nutritional benefits necessary for the growth and development of children. Theophilus Elama reports. Beaming from the success of its Kellogg's brand, Tolerum has unveiled another product designed to give children the nutrition they deserve. Go Grain Cereal is made with four ingredients needed to improve health, brain power and overall development of a child. Most mothers struggle with how to get the necessary nutritional benefits for their kids. And you find out that Go Grain is a, is a, is a product that has so many grains embedded in one. You have rice, you have soya, you have uh, millet and the rest of them all put together into one. Meaning, you have the opportunity of using that one meal to ensure that your kids are fortified. This field is the best for you because it contains essential vitamins and minerals to help kids study that is easy to prepare. And most especially, you, you, don't, you, are looking, you have four variants in one packet, four grains in one packet. That's why we call it multi-grain. Nollywood actress Funke Akindele was chosen as its brand ambassador. She underscores the need for children to be given the right amount of nutrition which Kellogg's products contains. Your children have varieties. 
because we get tired of things. If you keep giving me a bar and okra, I'll get tired. I need varieties. And my breakfast has become more, more, more interesting. So mothers out there, get gold grains for your children because it got a lot of grains in it. It has protein, protein. You know how important protein is for the body. So, and it keeps your children alert and active throughout the day. The fun part in all of this is that the mixture can be done in about two minutes, reducing the time to prepare a nutritional meal for children. Kellogg's Tolaram believes this will do well in the Nigerian market and aid mothers in giving the best to the family. Theophilus Ilama, TVC News, Lagos. Really enjoying some meal there. Now, the Oluwa of Iwo land, Adewale Akombi, has married a Kano princess, Fidaosi Abdullahi. The wedding fatia took place in Kano at his residence of Madanki, at the residence rather of Madanki, Kano. And our correspondent Ibrahim Isa reports. The wedding had dignitaries, family, and friends of both the bride and groom gathered at the residence of Madanki, in Kano. The Oluo had paid a million naira as dowry. Family and friends of the Oluo of Iwo land described the wedding as an important union between two institutions and is a way of promoting harmony between two ethnic groups in the country. That's, that's how God wants it. So, alhamdulillah. That's how God wants it. Alhamdulillah. We people from Iwo, we are really Muslim. So, we don't, I don't have anything to say to thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Incidentally, I'm not alien to the northern culture. I was actually born in Kano. So, but I just reaffirmation of what I've known. The similarity, the, 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 the difference is not much, except uh, our politicians and other people, they try to escalate, create division between us. Otherwise, it's almost the same thing. Thanks so much for being accommodating us, for being accepting us. I know this should be uh, pass a message to the nation that we Yoruba land, north and west. But I appreciate our people because I call them our people because uh, I believe in one Nigeria and they have shown us that now we can see it that they, they also be, believe in that one Nigeria. The bride's elder brother, Farouk Abdullahi, expressed happiness at the event and prayed for the couple to live in love, peace and harmony. Uh, so far, marriage can take everybody anywhere. As a man or a woman can be taken to anywhere. So all our doing is for praying for her to be a good wife and has the behavior that he had in uh, uh, getting from our family. The bride, Pidosi, is the granddaughter of the late Emir of Kanu. Ado Bayero, and a niece to the Emir of Kanu, Amina Ado Bayero. A reception strictly for ladies also held at the Gidan Rumpa, the palace of the Emir of Kanu, to mark the union. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kanu.